Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is Friday, July 5th. Today is day 273 since the attacks by Hamas on the south of Israel on October 7th. According to the Israeli news, um, Haaretz, the Israeli delegation that was headed by Mossad chief David Barnea, traveled to Qatar for negotiations on a hostage ceasefire deal with Hamas. Um, Israeli and foreign sources have expressed concern that Prime Minister Netanyahu might sabotage a deal, even if a deal were forthcoming. National Unity Party Chairman Benny Gantz publicly expressed that Prime Minister Netanyahu saying, um, or publicly addressed him saying that his party would fully back any plan that would allow for the return of hostages that continue to be held in Gaza. Um, Hamas has made a, a significant adjustment to its position over a potential ceasefire agreement with Israel, according to a senior U.S. administration official. And um, that official added, we've had a breakthrough. But despite this, officials have said there are still outstanding issues related to the implementation of the deal and that it would take time to finish the draft. Um, my assumption is that the problem with, quote, the implementation of the deal has to do with those little details of what it means um, to have a permanent ceasefire. Hamas has been consistent, saying they would only release hostages if there um, is a guaranteed um, promise that if hostages are released, there will no longer be attacks on Gaza, that Netanyahu and the Israeli government would have a permanent withdrawal of Israeli forces from Gaza, and that there would be a permanent ceasefire if, ceasefire, if not immediately, but that would be guaranteed. And so my assumption is that's the issue with the implementation of the deal. Um, Biden had said that would be phase two, and Hamas has been saying all along that has to be guaranteed. And Netanyahu has said all along that he would not agree to an end in fighting until all of Israel's goals are accomplished. But, I mean, I could be wrong, um, but if there are challenges with the implementation of the deal, that's what they have been thus far. Um, Hamas did inform Hezbollah that they have agreed to a proposal for a ceasefire in Gaza. Two sources familiar with the matter told Reuters um, earlier today, the organization said it rejected any plans for foreign forces to enter the Gaza Strip. Um, the question of who might control Gaza after an agreed upon ceasefire would be reached has been a core question of the next phase. The U.S. has been saying that they would be open to a revitalized Palestinian authority, um, Israel has said that they are the only ones who could provide legitimate security. Um, so there's been uh, quite a bit of discussion about what happens next and no agreement as of yet. A senior Hamas official said that the organization expects a swift Israeli response to its reply, likely today or tomorrow morning, according to Agence France, uh, the French press AFP. And dozens of mothers of Israeli hostages were joined by thousands of supporters in Tel Aviv for the Mother's Cry March. Uh, Shira Albag, who is a mother of a hostage, Liri Albag, said, There's a deal on the table now. It takes leadership and courage to sign the deal. We need to bring everyone home. It's possible um, this is closer than it's ever been before. Um, in terms of Israel and Lebanon, Firefighting and rescue teams have gained control over fires that have erupted in the north of Israel as a result of hostilities with Hezbollah. There were heavy rocket barrages from Lebanon um, on Wednesday earlier this week. According to Israel's Nature and Parks Authority, nature reserves in Galilee and the Golan Heights were severely damaged. A Hezbollah deputy leader, Naim uh, Kassam, told the Russian news agency Sputnik that expanding the fighting with Israel is not a viable option at the moment, but that they are prepared whatever the scenario. Israeli news reported throughout the day today that eight rockets were fired from Lebanon and crossed into Israeli territory, according to the IDF, but there were no casualties. The Hezbollah leader, Hassan Nasrallah, met with the Hamas delegation headed by Khalil al-Haya to discuss the situation in Gaza um, and ongoing ceasefire talks, according to um, Hezbollah. It's important to note that Arab news sources in the Middle East have indicated that there have been more than 400 deaths in Lebanon um, and people killed since October 8th by Israeli forces. They've indicated that more than 100,000 people in South Lebanon have been displaced on the southern border of Lebanon because of the hostilities there between Hezbollah and Israeli forces.
In Gaza, according to the health ministry there that's controlled by Hamas, at least 38,011 Palestinians have been killed. So now the death toll in Gaza is officially more than 38,000 people. And those wounded is 87,445 wounded since um, October 7th. The Israeli police announced that three Israelis who were not a part of security forces were suspected of involvement in a murder of a Palestinian from Gaza who entered Israel on October 7th. This incident has been under investigation for months. Um, it was placed under a strict gag order until now. According to the police, the three suspects traveled independently to the Gaza border on the day of the Hamas attacks. They collected arms from fallen soldiers and they used them to fight. Sources familiar with the case told Haaretz that the body of the Palestinian was armed. Seven Palestinians were killed and two others suffered severe wounds and heavy exchanges of fire with um, in an Israeli operation in Jenin in the West Bank, according to medical sources. The Israeli Defense Forces reported that four of those killed were members of the Janine Brigade operatives, a militant organization, and they, the IDF, said that um, all of those uh, who uh, were, um, they reported that um, all killed were part of forces surrounding a building where militants were in hiding when the armed squad was struck by a drone. Um, in terms of the Houthis, CENTCOM said that it destroyed two Houthi drones in the Red Sea and one Houthi radar site um, in a Houthi-controlled part of Yemen. And I wanted to close by just asking for you to continue to keep our partners um, and friends, uh, Palestinian Christians, in prayer, um, all of those living in occupation under East living under occupation in East Jerusalem, the West Bank, and Gaza. We just heard again from the Nasser family um, at the Tent of Nations who said Today in the early evening, uh, a couple of outlaws destroyed the fence near the main gate, forcing their entry onto the farm and starting fire uh, on the crops. We managed to control the fire from spreading as we were near the gate and we were watering trees with volunteers when it happened, but the attacks continue. Pray for those in Gaza, for all those who are looking for food and water, for those who are longing for hostages and prisoners who are being held unjustly to be released and returned home. Um, as we in the United States have been reflecting this weekend on our freedoms, uh, 4th of July, um, might we continue to work for the liberation and freedom of all in Palestine, in the occupied territories, um, for those in Israel and the Holy Land who long so desperately to be free. In the name of Christ, amen.